Now we start in Libya, where pro-government troops have pushed rebel forces out of recently captured territories after a heavy counteroffensive. Well, this comes as some NATO countries, including the US and France, are suggesting they could be open to arming the rebels. But there's criticism that this would go beyond the terms of the UN resolution. Well, Artie's Paula Slea joins us live now from Tripoli for more on this. Uh, Paula, the rebels seem to be losing their positions despite these allied strikes. So what's the situation like on the ground now? Well, the latest word we have in terms of the front line is that rebel fighters have now been pushed back to the city of Raslanuf. We are hearing that this is strategically important oil port city is firmly in the hands of Gaddafi's men. Now, there are numerous reasons being bandied about as to why the rebels are being forced to retreat and retreat so quickly. Part of it is because Gaddafi's forces are simply better organized. They're better trained and they have better leadership. And this is posing some real dilemmas to the international community in terms of what it should do next. We also know that the Gaddafi army has essentially changed its strategy, it's changed its tactics. Whereas days ago we saw them working through the desert, and this is essentially the terrain that they're working and fighting on, we saw them using long convoys of tanks. Now they're operating in small mobile units. And certainly this is posing a problem to coalition pilots from the sky. It's very difficult for them now to tell the difference between those who are rebels and those who are Gaddafi's fighters, because all of them now are using small tanks with mortars. But certainly in terms of Gaddafi's troops, it's giving them much more mobility, mobility that they did not have, say, 48 or 72 hours ago. At the same time, we are hearing reports that among the rebel fighters, there are suspicions that there are spies. Because the rebels are such a loosely organized bandwidth of people, essentially many of them don't even know each other, the possibility that among them there are Gaddafi men who are feeding back information to headquarters in terms of where and how these rebels are operating is a very real possibility indeed. Now, today is the 11th day that the coalition has been targeting Libya, the 11th day of airstrikes. And what we're witnessing now is a very quick retreat of rebel forces. So the big question on people's mind here is what will the international community decide to do next when it's becoming increasingly clear that these airstrikes are not that successful? But of course, Paula, the main criticism of the airstrikes was over civilian casualties. And there have been uh, some debate over to what extent that was happening. Are we any clearer now? Well, the government here in Tripoli is insisting, as it has done since these coalition airstrikes began, that the number of civilians continues to climb and that it hovers somewhere more than 100. Now, we do know that there were secondary explosions caused in the town of Mizda, which is about 200 kilometers to the south of Tripoli. They were caused at an ammunition dump that was hit in those coalition airstrikes. We went there as a group of foreign journalists and we saw damage to the hospital as well as to several homes and residential areas. The roofs of some of the wards in the hospital had been broken in. We also saw some beds where there was blood stains and debris. Now, the patients were evacuated in time, but we heard from the hospital staff that some 13 people were wounded. We also met when we were there a number of nursing staff, Bangladeshi and also Filipini, and they, as you can well imagine, are very anxious and very scared and very desperate to get out of here. Now, Paula, some world powers have been talking about providing military assistance to the rebels. What do we know about that? Well, the latest word is from the British Prime Minister, David Cameron, and he says that he has not ruled out arming the rebels. And this, of course, is the concern that's been expressed by critics in the international community and certainly here in Tripoli since that UN Resolution 1973 was approved. There is the clause that talks about all necessary measures, and this is open to interpretation. And what we're hearing from the British is that if weapons are needed to protect civilian lives, well, then they can justify the use of weapons. We're also hearing the similar kind of line coming out of the Obama administration. There they're saying that they could allow for the supply of more weapons and that they are looking at all options on the table. Now, if indeed there is going to be the supply of weapons to the rebel fighters, this poses a whole host of dilemmas and a whole host of very critical questions. Number one, people do not know who the rebels are. There are those amongst their ranks with al-Qaeda leanings, extremist leanings. Will these weapons land up in their hands? And indeed, if they do, what does that mean? There's also the very real possibility that the weapons could land up in the hands of Gaddafi soldiers. And then even more than that, if you're going to ha hand over weapons to fighters on the ground, you are going to need to give them some 
some kind of practical assistance and training, which begs the next concern, particularly here in Tripoli, and that is the question of whether or not the international community is preparing the ground to send ground forces here. Now, the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, has reiterated just how critical and just how important a scenario all of this paints. We all heard the statements that the only goal of the operation is to protect civilians, as according to the UN resolution. We also heard the coalition wouldn't side with anyone in the conflict. At the same time, France has recently stated it's ready to supply Libyan rebels with weapons. The NATO Secretary General has immediately objected, saying the operation aims to protect the population, not arm it. And we fully agree with this position. Now, Russia's ambassador to the United Nations has warned that when you talk about an arms embargo, it needs to apply across the whole field, meaning that it needs to apply both to the rebel fighters and to the Gaddafi regime. Another interesting question, or perhaps an alarming question, certainly for people here in Tripoli, is the whole question of whether or not the international community is going to target Gaddafi himself. The latest word coming out of Britain, as well as other powers, is that he is not a target. But people here simply do not believe that. Okay, Paula, many thanks. For one update, Artie's Paula Slear from Tripoli there.